handle the optimal planting window, uh, it looks like we're gonna go over a considerable amount of time. Th this is a box plot. This is the total data range. Uh, so anytime we're over here and you see data points laying out here, there's potential that we're gonna go over that allotment of 18 inches. Uh, it's gonna be largely a function of irrigation efficiency. Uh, and if you really look at our furrow irrigation efficiency, which about 80% of our acreage in the Mississippi Delta furrow irrigated, we're really talking about having irrigation efficiencies in the range of 50 to 60%. So if you have a soil type that has a 50% irrigation efficiency, and just quickly what that means is if you're gonna function, let's say a two inch deficit, you're gonna need to apply four inches to get two inches in the profile, 50% efficiency. The majority of our soils are really gonna fall in this range, 50 to 60 range, which means that if, if they're gonna really start looking at this 18 inches, because that proposal says that, or one of the proposals says that in a certain, they will put a meter on your well in a certain amount of time, you'll begin to report this data to a regulatory agency. What happens past that, we don't know, but again, from the research end of it, we're gonna to try to target what is on that permitted value, keep us below 18 inches. Uh, if we're at 50%, and we water correctly, we're gonna go over about one out of every two years. If you're at 60%, you're gonna go over two out of 10 years. So we need to get down a 70% irrigation efficiency range to uh, keep us below this permitted value of 18 inches. Everybody on board with me and following that? All right, so what are we gonna do then? Uh, and, what, and this is, you'll see our approach. What, how are we gonna begin to make our producers more efficient irrigators. The number one step, I think, is for us to start really considering using an irrigation scheduling tool. I've talked to a lot of producers over the winter. Uh, I can tell you the adoption rate in Mississippi is probably in reality somewhere around 1%. They're telling us that the overdraft, if we can reduce at our current acreage and current pretty much crop regime, if we can reduce our irrigation by about 20% across the board, then we really don't have an aquifer problem. There's a lot of literature that shows from out west where they have full-fledged, full-blown irrigation issues that if they would use, if their producers adopted a scientific irrigation scheduling tool, they reduced their water use by 35% and maintained their crop yield. So we screened a, a, a number of existing irrigation scheduling tools this year. Uh, this is here at Stoneville. Pretty much all of them uh, applied uh, five irrigation events and all of them scheduled within about three to five days of one another, which pretty much tells us is that from the extension side then is that we simply need, and I keep pressing, I want feedback from you, we need to identify an irrigation scheduling tools that our producers will use that's easy enough for them to handle, to hold, to touch, and will actually grab hold of and adopt. And I think that where it really saves them water is like, when do I start, when do I pull the initial trigger? And just one comment on that quickly is that, uh, You'll, you'll start to see some of that in our extension programs. I'm gonna team up with our soybean specialists. We're gonna use some irrigation scheduling tools out there. Uh, and we're also gonna be working with the, uh, the corn specialists, trying to use some irrigation scheduling tools there as well and see if we can capture. Uh, in this region, can we really save 20 or 30% uh, by using irrigation scheduling tools? So you'll see us roll that out this coming season in our extension program. Uh, the only other thing I wanna talk about today is deficit irrigation. Again, Soybean Promotion Board asked us to uh, look at ways to eliminate one irrigation event. Uh, Dr. Heather and them, I guess, kind of sat down and did the quick math. If we could eliminate one irrigation event in soybeans, it would go a long way at this 300,000 acre foot deficit. We designed a series of experiments, a multitude of them, looking at when do we start, when do we stop, what are the critical stress periods within. Now, a lot of that research has been done out west, but I think our producers, again, from the extension side of it, really want to see, or gonna to need to see actual data out of Mississippi on our soil types where we've identified stress, can tell them what the stress level is and assure them and hold their hand and say, look, we can put moderate stress on the crop at certain physiological regions during the growing season and maintain yield. So th that's what this series of studies, when we can consolidate that and drop it down, this is what we get. And again, th this slide is showing, is there physiological reasons where we can put a moderate drought stress on soybeans and maintain yield potential? This uh, flat line at zero is where we have blanked out against the well water treatment. This is a non-irrigated where we had a 50% reduction in yield potential because we didn't irrigate, no surprise there. Here's R2, and, and again, we point out, if we go above the well water line where we blanked out, which means we have either no adverse effect to a positive impact by putting a moderate to severe drought stress on it. If we see it drop below the line, then we have a negative yield 
impact. Everybody with me? So again, what we're trying to drive home is identify a physiological region where we can stress soybeans and maintain yield potential. And the reason we're wanting to stress them, not because we're out there trying to find something fun to do, but because 18 inches of water, declining aquifer levels, and we've got to probably eliminate at some point in the future an irrigation event. If we're gonna do it, where are we gonna do that? So we put a three and a half inch deficit on R2 soybeans. Uh, this is on a silt loam. And what we saw in that, well, I'll get to that later. Three and a half inch deficit, which I would call that a moderate stress, no adverse effect. Four and a half inch deficit at R3, uh, cost us about 10 to 15% of yield. And again, stressing at R5 but with a severe deficit, basically missing three irrigation events, cost us almost 20% of the yield potential. So the take home for us, again, on the research side of it is then, okay, we've one year data, uh, talk with some other people, uh, again, a lot of literature out west, is that if we're gonna stress the, our group four soybeans, that we're gonna only probably gonna be able to do it during this R2 window. Let me quickly just show you what that, wh why this is important as I begin to extrapolate this out across the Delta. Again, thinking about those declining aquifer issues. This is a uh, initiations test. Uh, again, this was done on a silt loam uh, with Delta King 4744 planted in the early window. Uh, Non-irrigated, it's cut 60, so you can tell it's been a good year for us. Uh, all the irrigated treatments cut around 80. Uh, R1 is when we initiated the first one, which is pretty much typical for our producers in Mississippi. They see a flower out there, they're not afraid to shoot water. Uh, if we wait till R2 to initiate, and w at that point we actually had a, a legitimate two inch deficit on there, which is when your, your high tech scientific ag engineer is gonna tell you this crop needs a shot of water, we run across there. And then we waited till R3, which we had missed basically two irrigations and shot the water across it. Uh, they maintain the yield potential. Okay, it's one year data. We're not coming out saying stress your R2 soybeans, uh, but again, we're trying to identify is this really possible. If we, if we do that, oh, and the other thing is that, so if we initiate when our producers in our region are tip, typically doing this, that right at flowering, that's six irrigation events, waiting to R2 is five irrigation events, so that, that's eliminated the one irrigation, which is what the Soybean Promotion Board was doing. But if we can really go into a deficit mode and stress it through that R2 window and wait till irrigate to R3, we miss two irrigation events. And we've cut it back to four. If, you, if we can eliminate just the R2 and we extrapolate across the delta, and miss that one irrigation event, that is pretty much the, that, that water savings extrapolated across the delta would be the deficit on the aquifer for soybeans alone. If we can really stress them, a moderate stress and eliminate two irrigation events, then uh, even if I'm 50% wrong on that number, then we really probably do not have a, a severe today, current acreage uh, aquifer problem as uh, we perceive it to be.